Yeah. Okay. Today is 40 days of letting go. Letting go of what? Uh, letting go of things of this world. Christ told us that uh, he who seeks to save his life shall lose it. Let me look that up real quick. That's a verse I didn't really um, add in today, but okay. That's Luke um, 1733 <clears throat> the NIV says whoever tries to keep their life will lose it and whoever loses their life will preserve it um, you know one of the reasons why uh, scholars try to make different dispensations is so they can alleviate this verse in the Bible. There is no alleviating of this verse. The Bible tells us Christ was slain from the foundation of the world. What God wanted with Adam and Eve, He still wants with us today. God is still after a family. Now, this is Luke 17:33. I want to read a little bit above it and below it. I want you to see that Christ is talking. You know, we're saved by we're saved by grace through our faith. Faith is faith is that which we love. Most simple explanation that you will ever get about faith is that which you love. What you love is where your faith is. Okay. Um, let's just start about verse 28 read down through 33 it says likewise also as it was in the days of Lot they did eat and drink they brought they bought they sold they planted they built it but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed in that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house let him not come down to take that which uh, take it away and he doesn't feel let him not return um, back remember Lot's wife whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it Okay, Christ was talking here about the the day of the rapture. It's because right after this, he says, "In that night there shall be two men in a bed; one to be taken, the other to be left. Two women to grinding together; one shall be taken, the other one left. Two men shall be in the field; one to be taken, the other one left." Okay, he was talking about rapture day. He was talking about way of the future. This was not meant for the dispensation of his day only or just for the Jews now, this is talking about the rapture everyone saved everyone who is saved under the blood of Christ everyone who will be saved under the blood of Christ this is who Jesus was talking about here okay leaving it in the context in which it was written and this is why I'm saying that Christ taught us to let go of the things of the world and now and there there's another there's a great study that you can go into that but I want to use this uh, right now to talk about uh, letting go of, of the world um, Paul Apostle Paul also taught about this subject Romans 12 1 he says therefore I urge you brethren by the mercies of God you present your bodies a living sacrifice acceptable unto God which is your uh, spiritual service of worship 
Okay, that's got to be the um, NIV. I don't want the NIV here. I want the KJV. Okay, so let's just back up a little bit because I like the way King James says it a little uh, a little bit better. Okay, um, and you notice at the end it says um, it says which is your reasonable service. Um, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, okay? And uh, Romans 8 and 1 says, Therefore, there, there is therefore now no condemnation to them uh, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. There is, this, see, this is, this is a given condition to your salvation. I told a man about this one time. He says, salvation is not mentioned there. I'm like, what? It says uh, condemnation. Okay? Condemnation. No condemnation. That means salvation. No condemnation. See, we're saved from, that's what we're saved from, condemnation. So, um, so therefore, you know, we need to let go of the things of the world. The more that we build our mind, there's a verse in the Bible that says, any man that loved the world, uh, the love of the Father is not in him. And yes, I will get that for you. Just give me a second here. John 2 15 John 2 15 and I want this right there in the Bible hub of edition literally it says it's uh, 1 John 2 15 it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the Father is not in him Okay, so now now that we know that it's biblical for us to let go of the world, I want to talk about some things that um, and reasoning that um, it, that we should let go of the world. You know, our pastor says all the time that um, you know he used to have a lot of friends in the world. You know, he was he was a popular fellow. And, and he's a popular fellow in the Christian world right now, you know. Seems like your personalities never really do change. And, you know, it seems to me that the greater um, uh, magnetism that you have in the world that it transfers over, it's just the opposite and maybe, maybe even harder. But the pastor, anyways, he said that, he said, I didn't have to worry about my friends uh, me leaving them he says when I became Christian he said they left me and I found that to be true you know and you know I was one who my family I was deep into my family I I loved and took care of my family I'd fight for not physically fight for my family and, uh, and and as soon as I got saved when they found out I was genuinely saved all those people they they left me you know and uh, Jesus the Lord says that um, no one who has given up anything in this world yes and I'll find that for you too in this world they'd be paid back a hundredfold in this life And in the one to come. Okay. I want to make sure I got the right verse here. And this might be a little bit harder to find than what I think. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mother, and children, and lands with persecutions and in the world to come 
uh, eternal life. Okay, and that's Mark 10:30. Let's go over there and read a little bit before that. I want to see, show you exactly what it's talking about. Okay, see, Christ told us to pick up our cross daily and follow after Him. But a lot of people, um, a lot of people think that you don't need to have, you don't need to pick up your cross. I, I, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> okay, let's start at 1028. Um, but first I want to, um, first I want to tell you about this friend of mine. I told him, I said, we, I said, we have battles. We have spiritual battles today. And he believed in grace alone. He believed everything was taken care of. He believed there is no battle. The Satan doesn't bother us anymore. And that everything that happens is just circumstantial. You know, and the things that I was telling him was pure ignorance. Even though he he claimed to be a dedicated Christian, and even he even preached sermons. I went to a sermon of his once, and he didn't do too bad. You know, as far as having the intellect and understanding of <clears throat> of the word, he was off track, of course, on that issue. But but um, he had no understanding of of uh, spiritual things around about us, even though he suffered terribly from the attacks of the enemy okay um, okay but this is what it says in Peter um, I mean in uh, Mark 10 28 starting it says then Peter began to say unto him lo we have left all and followed thee talking to the Lord and Jesus answered and said verily I say to you there there is no man that hath left house or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands or uh, for my sake and the gospels, but that he shall receive a hundredfold now in this life houses and brethren and sisters and mother and children and lands with persecutions in the world and in the world to come eternal life. But many that are first shall be last, and the and the last first. And notice that he left out the word wife there in that last part. You shall receive a hundred wives in this life. <laughs> the Lord knew that would be a terrible mistake, since he only meant for us to have one. And boy, how the atheists could have ridiculed us for that, you know. But... Um, it, you, you know, this is what Christ is saying, man. You know, if you really want to be happy, he says, I have come that you might have joy and that your joy might be full. Um, and uh, um, that our joy would be full. And, and that when we see, when we let go of the things of the world, which, which you know, the things of the world um, destruct. Okay, that you might have joy. I want to look that up for you too. I don't know. Looked up about ten verses here. <laughs> um, this is uh, John, Saint John, fifteen eleven. And I be says, I have told you this so many, so that my joy may be in you, that your joy might be complete. And King James, of course, says, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. See, this is why we need to let go. See, just 40 days of letting go of the world, man, just begin to practice just begin to let go of these things. I mean you know it's, it's a choice that we make to let go of the things you know let go of the things that you lean on let go of the things that you know I'm talking spiritually let go you know say well you know this is one way I tricked myself into losing weight and I said well I can eat that later you know I don't have to have that right now but you don't and and you know and then I can go hours without eating that way, and of course I go back and eat later. And some of the things this world we need, you know, like there is allergy medicine, and there is a doctor you got to see every once in a while. But you know, I'm just saying, for a while, just for a while, go practice trusting in God instead of 
so much on the things of the world. You know what I mean? And if, if you don't know what I mean, man, write to me. Read the Bible. Practice those things in which we preach already. Amen. God bless. Thank you for joining. We'll see you next time. Another great message right here across in the middle of ministry.